What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Today's the big day that we're finally gonna start putting together our pressure washer setup over at the warehouse. I've got the pressure washer here in the box. I've got my hose reel and a few other parts that we need to pick up to kind of finalize all the piping. We're gonna head over to Home Depot right now. Our good buddy Chris is about to join me. He's around here somewhere. He just grabbed the keys to my truck. He's trying to find the keys to his truck. Really dude? Is this what you're taking to Home Depot? Shit. Helmet down. Helmet down. That almost fits on your big old shiny dome there. Okay, this thing's good to go now, bro. Oh, you fix your scooter? Fix my scooter. Nice, dude. You ready to go take off some sweet jumps? Let's go. Dude, you look... <laughs> what? You look like a freaking cone head, dude, with your sweet helmet there. All right, guys, 10 bucks says Chris is gonna complain about something when he gets in the truck. Ready? Why don't you hop on in? What? What's wrong? It's pretty clean. Oh my god! This is the first time you ever said that. I just lost 10 bucks to YouTube. Why? I bet him 10 bucks you were gonna complain about something. You don't no. complain about anything. That's a first, dude. Are you happier in life nowadays? No. Oh, I, didn't no? Get, I didn't get any sleep last night. Uh oh. Hey man, you wanna hop on? Since you didn't sleep last night, you look tired. Wanna ride? There you go, buddy. We don't want you to work too hard, you know? Hardest working one in the group right here. So we've got our plywood here. We ended up going with the expensive three quarters, which is uh, the sanded ply, only because the cheaper stuff they got over there is just so bowed that it's not even worth dealing with. So for an extra 20 bucks, we actually get some straight plywood. Now we need to find some shelf brackets. Um, do you wanna go super fancy? Because they're uh, 12 or 13 bucks a piece, that's why not. See, I'm like trying to stay away from this look. I mean, obviously without this stupid little handle on it, but something tells me for the price we're gonna end up with that versus like some nicer wood ones. I think we're just gonna end up using these boogers for $6.50 a piece. Should do the trick. All right, so we've got two more six foot hoses. We've got some quick connects. We've got uh, just miscellaneous pack of hose washers. Don't forget that, that'll be important later. And then we've got some miscellaneous uh, PVC fittings there for the hose. I think we're ready to go now. We did seem to lose Chris though. I don't know where Chris is. Maybe I should go have him put a call out over at the front counter over here for my lost child, Christopher. Where were you, Christopher? Hmm? We lost you, where were you? I was so worried without you. Where have you been? What were you up to? Looking at some tools. Oh yeah? What are you, what are you gonna buy? You know, if, if you were like, I mean, you could redeem yourself right now on that fridge and buy that toolbox for the shop. Right. Come I on. I got you a fridge. Oh, you could have. Yep. What's wrong? I I, we, we'll take two fridges. No, yes, I will. I got no. I already gave it away. All right, so we've got all of our rough materials. I'm going to start calling this project the boat project because you know how everybody says a boat means bust out another thousand. This one's really a hundred, so we'll call it the bow project. Bust out another hundred every step of the way. It's been a hundred or multiple hundreds. We just spent $110 now on all the rough materials. Chris just put the shopping cart in the parking spot next to us like a jerk. You're that guy, huh? Everybody at C Bailey 619. What the hell that smell? Oh, now he's complaining. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. He's back. All right, Chris, you know the plan? Wanna put the basketball there? Yep. All right, so here's what my plan is. So obviously we've got this back wall over here, which is closest to the roll-up door. Chris is our uh, Vanna White for the day. So what I want to do is not hang the mop there, but I want to rip a piece of plywood down and that'll be a back panel. And then basically what that's going to allow me to do is build shelves off of that piece of plywood. And then if we ever need to move this or take this to my house or relocate this to a different place, all we got to do is unbolt the entire assembly basically from the wall and it'll come off as one piece and we can take it somewhere else. So this wall is actually concrete. Whereas um, in your house, you know, you're gonna have probably wood framing. So I'm gonna build this as if it were for wood framing, which means our sheet of plywood is gonna get ripped two foot wide. And why two foot, you ask? Well, two foot usually ensures that you're gonna be able to hit two studs in your wall. Typical house framing is the studs are 16 inches on center. So in being two foot, you kind of have a little bit of play to shift it either way um, and still be able to hit two studs, which if you guys will see, let's pull the pressure washer out right now. I believe this thing ends up being 50 pounds. Let's get her opened up. I haven't actually pulled this thing out of the box yet. So it comes with like a standard 25 foot pressure washer hose that uh, most pressure washers come with. We're gonna be getting rid of that and using uh, a 50 foot hose. That way we can actually reach around the vehicle. It comes with 
a gun or nozzle, whatever. I don't like this one because it doesn't have the interchangeable tips, which or maybe it does, maybe, no, I don't think it does. Uh, so obviously like hooking up a foam cannon or something like that doesn't really work if you can't change out the tips. So this is gonna get swapped out as well. But, uh, dipstick. This is the actual unit itself. So this is the AR Blue Clean 630. And this is actually the warm water pressure washer. And the reason I went warm water is not because I anticipate using warm water. Um, actually, I'm pretty sure the deionized tanks can only go up to 100, uh, 100 degrees, which I mean, I guess that's warm. But the warm water version is one of the only ones that has the TSS system, which is a total stop system, which means as soon as you release the trigger on the actual pressure washer wand, the unit shuts off, whereas like a lot of other units, they, uh, they sit there and they're constantly like an air compressor. They're just wah, 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 the whole time they're on, which would drive me absolutely crazy, and it doesn't make a good neighbor. So uh, I had to upgrade to the warm water one and spend the extra money. I spent 700 bucks on this thing, um, but I think it's gonna make life a little bit more enjoyable. So you don't have to spend this much. I mean, you can get a Ryobi one for uh, a lot cheaper. And the reason I went with- What about a power stroke? Don't get Chris's power stroke one. That thing's a piece of junk. <laughs> Um, uh, and it's free, dude. Uh, well, then if it's free, it's free. Okay. But the reason I went with one of these units, I was actually looking at some of the cheaper versions, like the Ryobi one that actually comes on a cart and just gonna disassemble the cart and mount it on the wall is, um, I wanted it wall mountable, and this is a nice, small, compact unit. Weighs an absolute ton, but uh, I mean, just look at the size of that versus like a big cart one, you know? So this hose reel is from Cox Reels. Cox Reels? Cox Reels. Hey. Uh, hose reels are not cheap. And I actually wasn't gonna buy the Cox reel because it was expensive. And then I started looking around thinking I'd find a cheaper option. There's just really not much cheaper of an option. I think I paid $120 for this one. This one I'll accept up to a 100 foot hose. And the reason I bought this versus the 50 foot hose one is uh, this one was weirdly on sale and cheaper than the 50 foot hose one. So one thing I did screw up on is not having Home Depot rip this for us, especially because like we doesn't need to be perfect. So now we need to figure out kind of our layout as to how we see this really working out. Kind of be like the pressure, the reels that doesn't need a shelf. There we go. The pressure wash here, which would be on a shelf. So it would get like that, like that. And I think one more shelf up top here to hold like spray bottles, um, microfibers or whatever it may be. So we've got our overall length cut now. So basically kind of what our plan is, is obviously shelf for pressure washer, then another shelf for some supplies. And then I wanted to leave room for another shelf up top should we need it, uh, maybe to throw the microfibers or something like that on there. So we have extra room. I only got four shelf brackets. So currently we're not gonna do that, but now we're gonna use this extra piece over here to cut our shelf because it's already the same width. You know, I probably should have ended up building this over at my house because I got like all of my wood shop set up over there, but we're kind of making do here with what we got at the warehouse. That's the wrong line. Now you see folks, this is why you measure twice, cut once. We were marking them out to do 12 inch shelves and then Chris was like, let's just bump it up to 13. So I was like, all right, we're gonna bump it up to 13. But then I went to the 12 inch line right here and uh, that would have made for a very bad day and a crooked cut. So I went ahead and sanded down all the edges of all the plywood and the shelves that we're gonna be using because I'm going to end up painting them uh, prior to assembly. And uh, we're gonna attach a piece of basically backing right here. And that is to attach the hose reel to because obviously in three quarters worth of plywood, there's not a whole lot of meat to grab. So I wanna make sure that we really firmly anchor that hose reel to this because it's gonna be getting yanked on all the time. So we're gonna screw this bad boy on from the backside that way you don't see any screws and then uh, we'll get this painted. So 
So while I'm sitting here watching paint dry, what my original plan was, was to use um, truck bed liner. So you can go to like AutoZone or Pet Boys, Home Depot might even sell it, and it's just a roll on truck bed liner, basically kind of like Line X Rhino lining. I wouldn't recommend that for your truck because I've never seen it turn out really that nice. But for something like this, I think it'd be ideal because it would waterproof the wood and it's almost rubberized. So if you're running like a cheaper pressure washer, I mean, I'm saying that assuming this one is nicer and doesn't vibrate, but I don't know. Um, I think that the rubberization would cut down on a lot of the vibration and a lot of the noise that you would hear coming off of like the whole setup. So just a couple options to think about if you guys are gonna make one of these for yourselves, either painted or, you know, like I said, I would look into the truck bed liner. It's pretty cheap. You can buy it by the gallon. So now the paint has dried enough. We're gonna start basically uh, assembling this thing. So Chris, do you like this? Position is this gonna work for you? It's a nice spot. That's a nice spot. Yeah, Get a nice, oh, geez, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. nice hand crank. Hand doesn't hit anything. We're good. Everything's happy. Yeah. Kosher. the real all right so we're gonna go 33 down from the top is gonna be top of shelf bracket inch and a quarter first shelf is on I may have made a mistake by not doubling up the plywood for this shelf because this one's really carrying the most weight um, other than the fact that this one's just gonna get yanked on all the time so that was the one I was really worried about but we shall see. Chris also didn't get enough screws. Way to go, guy. Way to go. You didn't get enough screws. Oh. So I just checked online. Uh, we got a hardware store we're going to run to right now that closes very, very soon. So we're going to hop in Chris's truck because it's going to take too long to roll up the roll-up door. Oh, here. Oh, you got me? Oh, thanks, man. So since we need to go into concrete, I'm getting, uh, we call them redheads, but they're wedge anchors. This is my preferred method for uh, shooting these into the concrete wall. Now we've got our screws, we're ready to go. Chris is organizing some stuff over here. What are you doing? I have no idea. And with five minutes to spare, we got everything we needed. We stay right there, we'll call it 16 and a half. Shelf number two. All right, now that we've got the correct amount of screws, we've got our shelving all installed and done. Now what we need to do is get it attached to the wall, and that's where we're gonna see the strength of our good buddy Chris here, because he's gonna have to hold this thing up while we uh, roto hammer through it into the concrete. You got this, buddy? Let's do this. All right, we'll take this off. We'll make it easier for you. You got this, dude? Teamwork, man. Come on. See where it makes work? Yep. All right. I am curious to see how heavy it is. Oh, come on, dude. I'm gonna go to the gym like you, man. You don't need to go to the gym to carry this. There's, there's a camera in the way. Give me this thing. It's not that heavy. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. We might have we might have not measured twice. There's a little crooked shelf going on here. What's this wee stuff? So in construction, we call this the angry inch. That's usually when you're like so dead set on your measurement. Like if it's 16 and a quarter, and you pull 17 and a quarter for some weird reason. I think that's what happened here. We're gonna have to shift this side down just a little bit. So what I like about these wedge anchors is it's a pretty high success rate into concrete, whereas a lot of other techniques are not. As you can see, like shooting them in, which was somebody did in the past. You just put them in, hammer them in. And then I don't have my socket set, but we'll just come back in with a crescent wrench and tighten them down. All right, you out of here, buddy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks for all your help, man. It's been great. It's uh, dinner time. Oh, okay. Have fun at dinner. Oh, you're caught. You're caught. All right, you heavy girl. You're gonna live here, and you're gonna stay, and you're not gonna fall. Okay. All right. That's it. There we go. Look, okay, that was easy. All right. Plenty of room here still. Put a bunch of stuff on this shelf. Cool. This is starting to come together. I'm so beyond stoked. Just to have a setup like this, like this is. 
To me, I like ease, and I like things that are just like, that have a place. I mean, I have a vacuum for the upstairs and for the downstairs at my house, because like, why do you want to carry the vacuum upstairs? I have a vacuum just for the stairs, which is another one of my, uh, another one of my Milwaukee vacuums. I actually have a couple of these, one for work, one for the house, which we pretty much just use it for the stairs. And you know, like, if something's easy, you're gonna want to do it. If getting to your pressure washer and your hose and all that stuff's easy, like you're gonna wash your stuff more. So now what I need to do is I need to finish up the plumbing. So obviously, why does this have a inlet? Why is the inlet male? That is odd. Well, after uh, suffering in the heat in the warehouse here, it is, it's getting hot and it's already uh, almost 7.30 at night and it is still really, really hot and humid in here. But I couldn't keep the big roll up door open because it kind of makes the lighting funky for filming. But here's where we've gotten or here's how far we've gotten. Um, I ended up getting these plugged in now so you guys can see the green light means that the tanks are good Obviously, I need to come up with a more permanent wiring solution. We'll get to that in a minute We've got our outlet hose coming around and yes, I know it's kind of pinched in there It's just holding it right there to our PVC connection And if any of you guys got the connections on some cooler looking like four foot hoses um, I think we could definitely upgrade to something cooler than the six foot green hose But regardless the water shoots all the way down the PVC along the wall don't mind the mess here, still have to clean up a little bit. And yes, we took down the basketball hoop because uh, we need to make some modifications to that thing. So water comes down, comes up in this corner to a male outlet right there, which the next hose will connect to. I didn't even want to connect the green hose to it because it looks ugly. Um, next hose is going to connect from there into the pressure washer. Then from here, I've got a uh, three or four foot whip ordered, and that whip's gonna come as the outlet side of the pressure washer, which would normally go to your wand. It's gonna come around, it's gonna go to the hose reel. Then the hose reel is gonna have a 50 foot hose on it that is also ordered and should be here in the next couple days. And then from there, we hook up our wand, and then we're essentially gonna be operational. I mean, we really probably could be operational right now if I just used the, uh, the hose and the wand that came with the pressure washer. But I don't wanna risk a lot of these PVC fittings. I just put them on like 30 minutes ago, so I'd rather give them some time to dry. That way we don't have any leaks. At some point, I may or may not put a, uh, a shut off right here. The problem with the PVC ones, and I actually have one in my shower. I don't know if I've ever showed you guys my ghetto dual shower head setup, but maybe I should show you guys one day. Um, but it ends up leaking eventually. They're just like the ball valves for PVC are just not that great. Um, but anyways, we'll worry about that later. Like I said, hose reel feels like it's set at a pretty good height. I didn't want it too high. I don't want it too low. You don't want it to be bending down here, cranking a hose reel or anything like that. It's pretty convenient, nice and comfortable for at least my height. I gotta say, not bad for day one, you know, and not having all the pieces that we really need to get this puzzle together. And I really wanted to see this thing show up before I knew like what fittings and all that stuff to start ordering. Like I feel like we should have a 90 degree fitting coming off of here and a couple other things that I'm sure over time and using this once or twice, we'll know that we need to tweak. But like I said, for day one, I think we came pretty far. Hopefully you guys are enjoying following the process of this build. And if you want to see more videos like this and truck videos and all the other cool stuff that we offer, please click the subscribe button if you have not subscribed already. And if you have subscribed already, thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate it. I would also be honored if you give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. And if you would head on over to our website, workfortapparel.com. Uh, you can see the giant work for banner back there because well it represents what I do every day and I'm sure it represents what a lot of you guys do every day and really our core mission is to restore pride in blue collar work and show people that you can be successful being blue collar. It is a great career path should you want to go that route. So like I said I'd be honored if you head on over to workfortapparel.com. There'll be a link down in the description. You guys are the best. Catch you in the next video. Damn.